Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is a paid request for Sean, who sent in a few requests for me to do uh, commentaries. I'll do my best. I'm not good at commentaries, but I will do my best. If anyone wants to request pretty much any type of videos, a topic, a review, reaction, commentary, re-review, what have you, feel free to send it, please, either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. So I'm pausing the beginning. And of course, this is for office space. Three, two, one, pressing play. So here we have the 20th Century Fox logo. And Sally, that's no longer the case because they got bought out by Disney. Great. Disney can suck on my purple people eater. 20th Century Fox. I believe this is my judge joint. I do remember enjoying this film. I remember this being a fun movie, relatable for anyone who worked the nine to five shift and who still does. The frustrations, the annoyances, the mind boggling stupidity of some people. And we have our star here, Ron Livingston. Which I remember from this film I thought was fun called Sweeners with John Favreau and Vince Vaughn. I know he's also on the TV show Band of Brothers. People may remember him also from The Conjuring. He was the husband of the family that was beset by ghosts and that our two leads had to go help the family. I think he was the, the father of the family in the first Conjuring. You think you're going somewhere and you get stopped again. <laughs> so that like, stuff is very relatable. You think you're getting somewhere and it's like, sure, just stayed. You think you're getting somewhere and then, nope, no worry again. And then that starts moving. <laughs> just stay, man, just stay. Just deal with it. I think this guy, what was his character's name? Michael Bolton. See, I think that guy was Michael Bolton, that's David Herman. I think he's a voice actor. He voices a lot of cartoons. And then this guy here, that's Ajay Nadu. I know he's in this film called Suburbia. And of course, Steven Root as a... <laughs> what was his name? A Milton. A Red Stapler. I don't need to be Red Stapler. Uh, I'm going to put down the building. If you take my mistake, you're going to go down the building. <laughs> like, my judge is a very talented guy. I love Beavis and Butthead. I love the, the two movies. I love Do America and Do the Universe. Idiocracy is an interesting one. Sally's become more and more reality. Of course, to see before we saw Gary Cole, which he's done a lot of stuff. I always remember him from this show that didn't last long called American Gothic. It was funny, I always remember like the promo and like images, but not the actual show. But like, Gary Cole, pretty good actor. I mean that guy I love his boss here to Yeah, I'm gonna have to you you come in on Saturday and um yeah. He was like the bad guy in Pineapple Express, he was in Talladega Nights with Will Ferrell has done a lot of stuff. I never worked in an office, but I mean, again, we all have that daily job that you just...
like and this is relatable because it's like the most minuscule thing and it's like the boss or someone else has to get so like they're trying to be your friend but they're being uptight about it and it's like is that the bit of a fucking deal what's the big deal about it it's such a minute thing it's like almost like a power trip That's all right, just Steam Root is great. Great in that role. And you know, the most my God, look at these old school computers, too. Just look at just how computers have changed so immensely, even from like 1999 to here. So apparently this came out February 1999, and Sally didn't do well. Didn't make much money at all, which is too bad. Now, I guess this is... There were these built-in short films that my judge created about an office worker by that name, and they first aired on Liquid Television and on Saturday Night Live. As person came from a temp job, he had... that involved alphabetized alphabetizing purchase orders and another job as an engineer for perilous graphics for three months just out of Silicon Valley and in the middle of that overachiever yuppie thing it was just awful someone at the studio responded with car wash but just set in an office Bolton <laughs> <laughs> Why should I change these are one of the sucks? Oh, fuck you, lady. Yeah, I tasted the munchies, as in, I'm going to munch your face off. Who the fuck is this Jamal Dweeb? Jesus, they try on the pedestal of shit. It is it taste of Monday, is it? Shut up and get my order. Sorry, I just looked at the principal photography. 
apparently by the third day of shooting temperatures had risen over a hundred degrees Fahrenheit and smoke from fires in Mexico was filling the sky over Austin making it white. Post the postponement of the opening traffic jam scene at the beginning of this film until it was cleared. Studio executives who saw dailies were not happy with the footage that Mike Judge was getting. Mike Judge quoted studio exec saying, More energy, more energy, we gotta reshoot, you're failing. They also asked Ron Livingston to smile more. Ron Livingston says he heard they believed he was on drugs which were considering firing him. What the fuck? That guy with the glasses with the paper going all hyper, that's Richard Real? Richard Riley? Not sure how to pronounce his last name, but it's though it's Richard. That guy's done a lot of stuff. He was in the first Hatchet film. He was one of the early victims of Victor Crowley. He's the guy that was part of the older happy couple and he didn't hatchet it up and his head ripped apart. <laughs> He was also Santa Claus in Harold and Kumar, uh, the Christmas movie. Again, he's done a lot of stuff. It's one of those, uh, it's that guy type of actors. Lethal Weapon 4, he was the guy I talked with Danny Glover early in the film. Where Danny Glover's like, what about, give me your tired and your poor of this country. He's the guy that says, well, the country's no vacancy. I think he was also the guard in The Fugitive that was on the bus, like one of those guards on The Fugitive with Harrison Ford. Um, oh, he was the sheriff in The Odd Couple 2 who would yell at Jack Lemmon and Walter Malthow that they kept getting arrested in his jurisdiction. Then he popped up in a lot of stuff. <laughs> this is how I am with technology, trust me. I get yeah, just as pissed. Oh yeah, and the the scene later on, I remember when they beat the shit out of that printer. Apparently it was based on a Mike Judge experience. He was so frustrated by writing He was about to do America that when he was done with the script he planned to take the printer out into the field and destroy it while videotaping the process. Ah, <laughs> uh, this guy here, Deidre Bader. <laughs> That's another guy I liked. I've seen him a lot of stuff. I remember he was the trainer in Napoleon Dynamite. I think what was his name? Rex, I think in Napoleon. He was like the big trainer guy. 
I know he was in a lot of uh, the Drew Terry show. He's one of the stars of the Drew Terry show. I remember watching that show quite a bit. And trying to think. I think Jay saw him about Strike Back. He was in there as the security guard of Miramax. There they are. And then that's when Jay tells Ben Affleck, You're the bomb and phantoms, yo. And he was the security guard, though. This has a good cast. That's one of the things that makes it work. It has a very funny strip by my judge. It has a really good cast that all synced up well. <laughs> well, we <laughs> what we do for a million dollars, but I do two chits to save time. Nothing. <laughs> you only Billy Dollar do nothing. Look my cousin. He broke no do shit. I can relate to this character a bit. I mean, if I had a million dollars, I probably would do the same thing and just do nothing. I'd probably just lie in my bed and sleep. Now the guy to the right of Gary Cole, that is John C. McGinley. And John C. McGinley, he's been a ton of stuff. I mean, he was in Platoon. He was in The Rock. He was in uh, Highlander 2. Uh, Surviving the Game. He was one of the hunters going after Ice-T. I I say nothing to lose, which is a fun Martin Lawrence film. Uh, Any given Sunday, I think he was a reporter in that one. Like he's been a lot of stuff. Good character actor. I mean, I guess the closest I came to an office job was telemarketing. Just Stephen Root is just the way he approaches that character, man. Just the. It should de it, it, The wrong answer should be very annoying. <laughs> oh, shit. Man, this guy's on for the hunt.
Yeah, those old school computers, man. I just marvel just how completely old those things look. It's so alien compared to today. It's so crazy just how alien they look. It's very interesting flip through uh, time to see that stuff. And I love Terry. I get it. Well, basically, just the way they approach it. Yeah, I'm going to have to have you come in. Man. Okay, that'd be great. It's like one of those, like, is it such a douche, but it's not like an angry douche, but it's still a douche. God. <laughs> so this doctor here that's Mike Machine and I would sit there and go why does this guy look familiar why does this guy seem familiar and I realized what it was he's Friar Tuck in Robin Hood Prince of Thieves with Tim Costner and he was also the professor who was friends with Macaulay Culkin and Richie Rich who came up with the Robo B and all that that's this guy who's the Dr. Swanson, the hypnotherapist. Wait, oh, okay, yeah, Robin Hood and Richie Rich. I do remember them from back to the day. Let's see. Oh, he was a voice in Treasure Planet. You see, looking through some. <laughs> My judge talked about the marketing, which was the poster with the post it notes. My judge says, People are like, What is this? A big bird? A mummy? A beekeeper? The tagline works such. They look like an Office Depot ad. I hated it. I hated the trailers too, and the TV ads especially. Yeah. And tracking, of course, was that good. I mean, yeah. The poster doesn't really tell you what kind of movie it is. It's a sly film. Let me tell you, sly is hard to sell. Yeah? And this guy's like, fuck this shit. I would just unplug the damn machine, but... Just sleeps the whole day away. So my judge says, you know, the film came out, it didn't do well, but then Jim Carrey invited me to his house. Chris Rod let me the best voice bell ever. I had dinner with Madonna. Four years later, Judge was working on Idiocracy. During a break, the two went on to an Austin Starbucks and the baristas were doing impressions of Lumber. Cohen asked my judge if they were only doing it because he was present, whereupon the barista turned around and asked the two if they had ever seen the movie. <laughs> well, 
Ron Livingston has said that people have told him, you know, I watched that film, and I quit my job because of you. Office Space made them feel better, and the actor appreciates that. <laughs> Say fuck it. Live your life the way you want. I don't think he gives a shit. <laughs> Just did nothing. <laughs> I, did, I think it's, it hit into something that a lot of people can relate to. A lot of people, could, they see themselves either wanting to be the Ron Livingston character, wanting to act this way, go through this way, this journey. Uh, fulfill that desire of, you know what, life is short, live the life you want to. And it's easier said than done, because most of us, you have to live a certain life that we need to, because it's to pay bills, and not everybody's going to like their job. I hate to be your bad news. There's a shitload of jobs out there that's needed. Do you think people say, I want to be a janitor, I want to be a sewage worker? But at the same time, we need them. Ah, uh, Jennifer Aniston. Keep forgetting she's in this. And it was a pretty small role, but... Yeah, you know, I always liked Jennifer Aniston. I never minded her as an actress, to be fair. I mean, she's in Leprechaun, but no one can save Leprechaun, let's be honest. I didn't mind the film she was in with Ben Still Stiller called Alone Team Polly. Friends, I could take it or leave it. I mean, I have no... I could watch Friends and be fine with it. I think the cast is likable enough. I think that's what helps the show. If you watch it, it's a likable enough cast. That's it, I don't mind Jennifer Aniston. Uh, she just doesn't bother me. So, she did a good job in this. And... They, my judge has made this Beavis and Butthead do America than this film, Idiocracy, Extract, and Beavis and Butthead do the universe. Ah, uh, this guy, he knows he's getting fired. Which he soon will. <laughs> of course, going along with it, this is the bosses love it, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the poster again. The poster is awful. It's a guy with a bunch of post it notes and. It looks like a Nickelodeon type of poster. Or Michael. This is 7.6 on IMDb, so it's definitely a film a lot of people like and enjoy, as do I. Let's see, look up some trivia for this.
the red stapler for Milton was created by the prop department. They needed a bright enough color to be seen on film and chose red. The company of stapler swing line received so many requests from customers. They made the decision to start offering the color once more. <laughs> Don't tell me won't go anymore. <laughs> now you mean like Kung Fu David Carradine or you mean like a Kung Fu movie? Uh, they don't change his desk again. It's a great choice with the glass as well. It gives these like fish type eyes. These bug eyes. <laughs> This is a total power play. It's like such a dickhead douchey thing like I'm better than you, you can't do anything about it kind of power play. Don't burn the billion down. <laughs> Pee, but we set the building on fire. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, I'm just watching the film. It's been so long since I've seen this. I just... I'm just enjoying the dialogue. Now, of course, yeah, in real life, I'm sure if you did this, you would get fired from the get-go. But it's part of that fantasy play, like a lot of movies. I mean, you don't go into these movies as documentaries. You don't look as, yep, this is exactly what would happen. I mean, the Milton character himself is taking something that's relatable and building up to a bit of a cartoon. Same with, I'm sure there are people like Derry Cole's character, but you build up a bit more for a movie type where you it is comedic and maybe a little bit cartoony but at the same time not so over the top that it it still has that relatability factor to it I think that's my judge right there <laughs> talking to uh, Jennifer Aniston Yeah, he's the manager of this place. That is my judge himself with the big old mustache and that crazy hair. Yeah, but my judge, you know, I've seen interviews and stuff, always seems like a cool guy. I just, the only thing I disagree with him on is when they did that Beavis a Butthead box set, and he's like, well, I don't want this and this and this release because, you know, the animation or blah, blah, blah. No, people want every piece of that history of Beavis and Butthead. That's why I have it unofficially, I would say, a whole the whole set of Beavis and Butthead. And that's the thing is, you know, to this day, the whole set of Beavis and Butthead is not released. If you do the idea, it's a best of. So Milton was laid off five years ago and no one told him, but he kept getting paid and now they fixed it.
<laughs> now he's on the frying pan. He's in the fire. <laughs> Well, he saves one step going, and now things took a little bit of change of heart, I guess. Took the guy's parking spot. Going to change everything up. It's sort of that rebellious nature that people are in tune from the, the golden days of Hollywood and comedy, even going throughout the years to places like Animal House. You know, people relate to, again, the rebellious natures, the underdogs, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, she did go fishing with Deidre Bader. Very cool. <laughs> like I said, just sort of that rebellious nature that people, you know, what they would like to do at their job. And again, there's always that venture between reality and fantasy that yes in reality if you did most of this you would get fired and within five minutes you couldn't do this but again that wish fulfillment so wish fulfillment possibility that like a lot of movies you can't you wouldn't be able to do exactly like in the movie but the bottom line being if you're not happy with your job Obviously, like I said, many people are unhappy with their jobs and they sadly have to deal with it day by day and you can't just go somewhere else because it's easier said than done to do that. But maybe, just maybe, if you find something that makes you a little bit happier or a little bit more sane or a little bit more able to get through this risk versus reward and there's always going to be a risk and you know you, they never tell the stories about the people that did get screwed over and did go take that chance and was dropped from under them collapsed from under them they don't really tell a whole lot of those stories it's just depressing but at the same time it's are you willing to take the risk
And even that, like that whole bit with Derek Cole, you tell like he can't do anything to Ron Livingston. So in order to take his frustration out, even though he's in this his own emotional status, there's still that bit of anger. Is like you know what I'm gonna take you out on this guy because I know I can do something to this guy. So yeah, you don't have to move over to here, and yeah, you don't have to move down there too. Yeah. That type of the picked on Milton. And yeah, nineteen ninety nine was a crazy year for movies. I mean, some would say that's in a weird way that was a a seminal year because you looked at from blockbuster you looked at it from blockbuster movies like the Blair Witch Project, and how much money that made considering it's low budget, to The Matrix, and how that seemed to change the game in terms of effects and style, to even films like Fight Club, The Sixth Sense, American Beauty, you know, there's a whole series of movies, and let alone this, that you just reflect and go, oh shit. Trying to remember what other movie they like this idea, and it's like, oh yeah, we'll do that idea from Office Space. Or maybe I'm thinking of this movie. I like that they reference Superman three because it did remind me of the Richard Pryor. But I was going to say then these still arrived from on my mouth. I'm like, was that Superman three? Do you think there's another movie later on that referenced this movie that dealt with this hacking business? Maybe not. <laughs> That's not right. You shouldn't say that you like Michael Bolton music. What the hell? By the way, that whole name thing, I, I kind of, I have friends that have dealt with that, but actually more a positive way. Like, I have a friend named Fabio, and each time he goes to a convention and meets a celebrity, every single one of them, the way he says that, your name's Fabio? Really? Oh, that's cool. So, I mean, I guess that's more of a positive note. I like this.
Oh yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be through a couple of years, but they do the mistake where they did it all in one go, so millions are taken out immediately. Again, sorry I'm not saying much, I'm just enjoying the <laughs> watch of the film again. <laughs> Who the fuck is that? Don't don't worry about him. <laughs> Apparently, the studio was also complaining about the usage of gangster rap. I'm sure if the studio had their choice, they would probably use like Mission Impossible theme here, like dun 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 dun. dun. I mean, it to I mean, it definitely gives it a different feel considering the location and the the people involved. Makes it less corny and less cringy. <laughs> Trying to do those like still shots like it was a high tech es espionage movie. Or the coolness factor. God, back in the day when you had like floppy disk and was well, that's that's not floppy but those type of things now people would be like what the hell is that <laughs> those th those big ass things you've slipped in there now it'd be all like usb or hey they something else Oh, doesn't he get hit? He just hit, right? Yep. <laughs> Damn, getting seven figures out of that from a drunk driver? How the hell you... Who the hell hit him? Ray Charles? It 
So that guy Drew, that's a guy named Great Pitts. And he's done Beethoven's third. <laughs> Uh, Coyote Ugly. God, I forgot that movie existed. He was in Idiocracy as Cameraman. Alvin the Chipmunks, the Road Chip as Pool Attendant. Ah, uh, here we are. And yeah, this is obviously done in the style like a mafia hit. Like it was Casino, Goodfellas. <laughs> and I, this is another thing I can relate to. This is something I would want to do to this fucking satellite dish. The huge net satellite dish. I swear one day, one day I'm just going to take that fucking thing. I'm just going to smash it just like this. Just like this, man. <laughs> Die, motherfucker, die, motherfucker, die. Pff, fucking printer. Die, motherfucker, die, motherfucker, die. That's a damn good move that guy had, the dance move. Like, damn. Bright into Electric Boogaloo. Let me see, what else came out in 1999? Deep Blue Sea, that's a very fun one. That came out in 1999. Like I said, Blair Witch Project, which I'm a huge fan of. Love the Blair Witch Project. Uh, let's see. I really enjoy Fight Club. Like I said, I really enjoy this movie. Damn. Pepsi all just <laughs> Pepsi right there. I wonder if that was part of the brand deal. Okay, fine, let's have some Pepsi in there. I mean just that stuff is done on purpose in terms of the prop department. Cause that could have just been nothing on there or Coca Cola or anything in between. You see, in January, you had films like Virus. Bad Jamie Lee Curtis film, although it has some good special effects, but that's it. February, you had Payback, which I enjoy with Mel Gibson. I thought that was a fun movie. My Favorite Martian wasn't so good. 8 Millimeter, underrated film that came out in February, same month as this movie. Analyze this. Pretty decent film with Billy Crystal and Robert De Niro. Rest in peace, Harold Ramis, who directed that. You have The Corrupter, which I thought was a pretty lame Mark Wahlberg, Chow Yun Fat movie. Mark Wahlberg was terribly miscast. Wing Commander, pretty bad sci fi film. I like some of the music. Uh, I knew a little bit about the video games. It didn't really seem like the video games and just felt like a. I don't know. Another wannabe, you know, Star Wars. I know it's based on the video game, but still. Ravenous, which is a pretty interesting cannibalism movie in the Wild West. Western horror with Guy Pierce. Ed TV, which is a much lesser version of the Truman Show. Thought the Truman Show was much better. The Matrix I saw in the theater, really enjoyed that film. Let's see, Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, that came out that year, of course. Entrapment with Sean Connery. 
Idle Hands, that's a fun one with Devin Sawa. That's an entertaining movie. The Mummy. I do like The Mummy with Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser did a great job in that. But yeah, The General's Daughter, Tarzan, Bid Daddy, South Park, The Movie. So Blair Witch Project, Lake Placid, Deep Blue Sea, The Iron Giant. A lot of good movies. Bullfinger is a good one. Universe of Soldier of the Return, I think, is an underrated, fun popcorn movie. Three Teens, that's a, you know, I mean, it's Mark Wahlberg, but George Clooney, Ice Cube, that's a good movie, Three Teens. It's a Fight Club. Oh, yeah, Bring Out the Dead, I forgot about that movie, Martin Scorsese, that's another solid film. How the hell would that guy know? So of course, yeah, there's a mistaken identity. I remember this. He thinks the guy said lumber to Ron Lemmings didn't think it was his boss. And of course he found out no it wasn't his boss. It was another guy named Lumber. Why you listen to some guys like hey how do you try to be like a Albino David Arquette. Don't listen to that guy. But of course, you know, I, I would say, to be honest, I mean, I, I like Jennifer Aniston, and you know, this is my least. I think it's the least interesting part of the movie is this whole little love story thing. It just, I don't know, it is, it's there. Like I said, it's just, Jennifer Aniston has such a small part in it, which, I mean, I just think of it as, what, did you even need a love story in this at all? Like, did you really need it all? I mean, it's not bad. It's just one of those things I'm like, eh, was it really needed, though, at the end of the day? Like, did you even need it? Yeah. Jim Aniston was cast to accommodate Fox's desire to have a recognizable star in the film, although they were concerned that her part was so small. The subplot involving her battle with her boss over her flair was added as a result, and she was written out of the sex dream scene, along with dialogue indicating she actually had slept with Lumberg. However, she had liked the strip since she was not getting many other films like that at that point, and she had gone to the same high school as Herman. Was that, uh, I think that David Herman, who's a co star. Yeah, I guess, you know, Jennifer Aniston, now that I think about, it, like, she didn't get a tremendous amount of movie roles at that point. Now that I think about it, what, what other films was she in? To look that up. There's my judge again. More of that Pepsi as well. You think? 
on that thing, but let me see here. Yeah, all this fucking shitty flare. Let's see, around this time, she was in... In 97, she was in that movie Picture Perfect. And then Till There Was You. Which she didn't star in. They starred Gene Triplehorn, Dylan McDermott, and Sarah Jessica Parker, so she didn't star in it. Something called The Thin Pink Line. What the fuck is that? The Objection of My Affection. Romantic comedy with her and Paul Rudd? Wow, Paul Rudd. And Picture Perfect made a little bit of money. Thin Pink Line. It's a parody of the Thin Blue Line. It's a fake documentary comedy. <clears throat> Even after this, she was in Rock Star. Bruce Almighty, that's right. She was Jim Terry's. She was with Jim Terry and Bruce Almighty, that's right. Can't believe really forgot about that. The Bonnie Hunter, I remember not minding for what it is with her and Drop Butler. I actually remember not minding that film. Oh yeah, and he doesn't get any piece of cage. That's right, Milne just fucked over again. But that let them do it themselves, you dumbass. How will you pass a fart in your face? Shut up. Sorry that you passed over a hairstylist your whole hair is a whole fun shroy I'd be like fuck you I'm gonna keep my cake you can't do shit and of course he didn't get cake
They, and it definitely was the last straw. Great. <laughs> I'm trying to remember um, would they know that it was related to these oh my god I forgot Orlando Jones was in this man I forgot But yeah, I was just, sorry, I didn't listen to the dialogue again. But yeah, Orlando Jones. I remember, like, he was in the first couple seasons of Mad TV. And then he would be in the films. And sadly, he's one of those guys that deserved a successful film career because he's a very talented guy. And some of the stuff he was in, like, I enjoyed him in The Replacements with Tiana Reeves. Evolution, I think, is an underrated film. Uh, but Sally, like, a lot of, like, choices and movies that just bombed. I mean, By Orlando Jones, it is filmography from Del Sodon 3. Bedazzled. Evolution. Which I think it is underrated, but that film bombed big time. The Time Machine. I actually don't mind it. I, I like the Guy Pierce one. That was a big bomb. Biker Boys. Primeval. A very lame. That was a lame movie. That's a movie that. The advertise is all about this man-eating crocodile, but when you watch the film, it's much more about 
political what was going on in that time the not the pirates but the upheaval of it's more about the human bad guys than about the cry the, the cry was like secondary very much secondary It was more about the the warlords and rebel, yeah, these warlords that were in it. I mean, it just and the way they use Orlando Jones' character, I thought was really lame too. Enemies closer with Van Dam, he was in that, and yeah, I don't mind that film, but like he was in a lot of films that bombed, and so sadly, I think the film that's like his big hopeful comedy break that was double take where they did Griffin and that that didn't really work out because it seemed like the big thrust of that movie should be okay Orlando Jones is uptight but now he's going to be trying to act how weird and crazy and Eddie Griffin was wild and crazy he's going to try to act all uptight and sophisticated and they did that for like a few scenes, but then most of it they just didn't do that and just Fuck you, Opie Taylor. Fucking dickhead. Tell Aunt B my pies are ready. I am trying to do the right thing. But how would it link back to them? Like, that's what I'm wondering. How would it link back to them? I just, to be honest, like, they would have to find a way to cash the money. I just, to be fair. To be fair, where you go the cash, you know, three hundred thousand dollars and among other shit, but The last straw. It's the last straw. <laughs> well, the, so the door was open the whole time. Ah, uh, there's that thing on the ground there. I would say make a run for it. I wouldn't go to work. I would like make a run for it. Or do a little Bruce Banner or David Banner. New, 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 new. Just that crazy mustache, man. Type that you you don't even need handles on a motorcycle with that kind of mustache. The Gary Powell. <laughs> oh, as he puts it, yeah, watch out for your going, old buddy. Let your pie hole keep being a cherry pie. Don't let him pop it. Oh shit. <laughs> well, there you go. He did warn. 
He did warn earlier on he was going to burn the building down. <laughs> I like that little detail that he, he was able to figure it out. I don't know why, just little details like that. Like, it could have made where none of them ever know who did it, but unless just us, the audience, but I don't know, that little detail that he's. I don't know why. Sometimes little stuff like that I can appreciate. Yeah, I don't know why. Ah, uh, the red stapler. It's also interesting with the way this ends because in a normal movie or comedy it would end with them getting away with the money and them I mean it does to Milton but like these guys they'd be rich and to be on a beach and whatever. But also the fact that it's kind of that realization of he wasn't happy with his job, but he can't just not do anything and I will I just won't work anymore, I won't pay bills anymore. It's kind of this happy medium. Is you'll find something that makes you at least a little bit happier. In this case, not working in a cubicle, but working a bit outside and a little bit of the air. If you find something that makes you a little bit happier, it's better than nothing. <laughs> The fucking t shirt. I ate the worm. <laughs> that does seem like a really nice place, man. I would love to visit that type of place one day. <laughs> Ron Livingston, David Herman. I think David Herman I think would be a voice actor. I don't know what a Jay has done since. Man, he got fourth build. Wow. Even above I think Stephen Root should have been above him. Same with Derry Cole and Jennifer Aniston. That's the guy who was in Hatch and he was Santa Claus in the last Harold Kumar movie. Yeah, Deidre Bader. <laughs> it's a really good cast. And it's always cool when they do these type of credits where they give each one their own time to shine and even like a visual cue. Like if you can't remember the name of the character, you go, oh yeah, the visual cue of who that person was. But I was saying is, you know, there was a, they could have done the typical ending where, you know, they get the money and it's happily ever after in the case of we don't have to work anymore, this and that. And, uh, but no, they actually went a different route and kind of a, 
different take on it and I would not have minded if it was the hey we're rich and we're living the lecturer's life I've enjoyed many movies that have done that but again it just makes it feel a bit more different a bit more more in tone with like my judges I don't know type of writing I don't know how else to put it but yeah office space is a lot of fun like I said it's relatable it's sly it's low key it's not a ton of slapstick or crap humor it's a pretty short film 80 some minutes long like almost to 90 minutes it's a good length has a great cast work well together some that again might seem a bit cartoonish but they're it's more fun and entertaining to try to do an impersonation of in particular Steven Root and Gary Cole and still a, a fun movie so with that said thanks once again Sean take care everyone and we'll see you later bye bye